Hello everybody, this is a quick demonstration of one of the many ways you can leverage the Cisco IOS XE Unix guest shell. The guest shell is pretty much a Linux container that you can attach to a virtual interface on the router. In this case I'm using the Cisco CSR1000V and this is a virtual router and I'm using a physical 40 gate 60E firewall. I'm going to show you how you can configure and start the guest shell and then we'll install iperf and configure the 40 gate for the test. The guest shell will act as the iperf server and the 40 gate is going to act as the iperf client. However, you could use the same method for perhaps testing from the Cisco router out to an iperf server hosted on the internet, which is a very common use case in the real world. You can find the exact model, image and software versions in the video description. So here we are at the Cisco CSR1000V. As you can see, I've gone ahead and configured an IP address on the interface, and I can also reach the internet, which we're going to need in order to install the iperf3 package. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the IOX status. Uh, IOX is the Cisco framework that enables application hosting, and that's, what's that's what we're going to use in order to stand up the guest shell. So you can do this by running uh, the sim simple command, and as you can see, it's not running. So all it takes to enable it is one command from the global config, IOX, and this is going to take about a minute. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and configure our virtual port group interface. This is where the guest shell is going to attach. And for that, let's use a simple slash 24. And let's give it a description as well. Now, by now the, guest, the IOX should be enabled, and it is. So the next thing that we're going to do uh, is configure the actual guest shell. And you can do all this from the application hosting hierarchy. The application ID is going to be guest shell. And here we're going to map the first gateway interface to the virtual port group and at the same time map it to the guest shell interface, which is called guest interface zero. Now this drops you into a new hierarchy where you can configure the actual IP address that's going to go on the guest shell. And we're going to use that too for that. Now if you exit out of this, uh, we can configure the default gateway and map it to the guest interface as well. And the last thing we're going to need is the DNS server because the package manager needs DNS resolution. And if we take a look at the configuration, we got everything we need. So now all that's left to do is enable guest shell. And we can do that from privileged exec mode. Once that's ready, we can take a look at the application hosting detail and confirm that the guest shell is running and that matches the IP address that we configured. Now, that also means that we should be able to ping it. And we can. So now if we type in guest shell, this is going to drop you into the actual Linux shell. Now that we're at the guest shell, I'm going to make sure that I can reach the internet from here. And it looks like we can. So let's go ahead and install the iperf3 package. And notice that I'm doing this as a sudo user. And I'm going to fast forward through this real quick. Once that's ready, all that's left to do is run iperf3 as a server. Now over at the 40 gate, notice that I've already configured the static route in order to reach the guest shell. So the first thing we can do is make sure that we can reach it. And it looks like we can. Now the configuration is going to take place under the Diagnostic Traffic Test Hierarchy. Uh, so if we do a show, we can see the current settings. Uh, notice the default port is 162. However, the iperf3 default port is 5201. Um, so we can change that real quick. And the next thing that we're going to want to change is the client interface. Uh, let's use the WAN port so that the test goes through the firewall instead of originating from the internal LAN interface. And if we take a look, uh, we, if we take another look at the settings, um, now it seems that we have what we need. So the only thing we need to do now is initiate the test. And if you're familiar with iperf3 options, uh, here we're just using the client option, and that should print the results to the screen. And if we go over to the CSR1K, you can confirm that it's the same results. 
So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.